Now that you seem like someone they want to work with, the question becomes, why you specifically? Because there are other confident people they might want to work with. Um, but just one, we'll get to that later. But more importantly, I think, is the fact of, do they believe that the thing you will deliver is what they actually want? And I'll tell you how important this is. We've had 10, no, that's probably maybe too much, maybe six or seven, six or seven projects, which exclusively have come to us having already hired a contractor, already spent two months on a project, didn't go the way they wanted to, Oof. and now they're coming to us mm. because they either went with someone cheaper or they learned a valuable lesson about people who aren't transparent or they just in general didn't know what they were looking for because they're new and they're trying to find somebody. And Because, again, a lot of these projects are, I have an idea, I've just been given 20 grand by a government grant, I have to find somebody, and they're equally as like, I don't know what to do with this. How do you find a good contractor for this? Um, so a lot of people will come to us having already been screwed. And so having that sense of, we've got you. <laughs> we've done this a million times. Here's what we know. Here's some guarantees that we can try our best to give you. And and at least you understand that we're not trying to screw you. If, if something goes over, it's because it's something outside of our control and we've tried. As long as they have that, they can just go, oh, okay, fine. At least, at least we know we're somewhat safe in this person's hands. Um, and the way you do that is you understand what they actually want to do. And this is the harder part. Um, so it's not just about working on a project and sort of, um, doing what they ask for. And this is one of those things that takes a lot of experience and practice, and you're going to get this wrong a lot. Hmm. Um, a client will often come to you having done their homework, trying to sound like they know what they're talking about. This hmm. isn't every client, but some of them will, and they'll hand you a piece of paper and said, well, we've looked into this and we've written a Gantt chart and we have a load of, uh, <laughs> deliverables at oh, these no, dates. Gantt and, charts. <laughs> <yeah>. and, <laughs> and like, and, and we understand that you, you know, obviously you'll be using a unity for this and you'll be using uh, this, this particular platform and this particular thing. And, and, the, and you'll be looking at it going, this looks like somebody who's looked into this, but like is just throwing guesses down because they're trying not to be screwed. They're trying to like make themselves comfortable that it's like, Oh, I know they can't screw us because I know what's what their job entails. And oftentimes that's wrong. And that's wrong for two reasons. One, they actually usually don't factor in stuff they don't understand. So the first one is, for example, I'll have clients come to me and say, here is 10,000. I want this made. And I'll look at that and I'll go, okay, what do you want made? Well, I've got this VR experience. It's multiplayer. It's going to have five characters and they're going to have all of these powers and abilities. And I'm like, okay, take a step back. Five characters, are they custom? Okay, custom characters. So we'd need to hire someone to model those custom characters, right? Okay. Well, the day rate for a modeler to make a model. And then you'd go through and you'd say, well, depending on the complexity of the model, that might be two weeks for one character. And that might cost them four to four to eight thousand and it's like well we've now got one character for eight thousand what do you want to do with the rest of the two thousand <laughs> so you have to sometimes take a pause and say look i understand that for you like you're looking at it that's a lot of money but projects like this are often not that straightforward there's a lot of other people involved other work to be done we can we can cut corners we can use off-the-shelf models we can hire a texture artist instead to texture existing models. there's all these different things you can do right. and this is what i'm saying about trying to find a compromise to get their vision made and to understand what their budget is and to work with them um, and that's that's generally the idea that they will get that part wrong. And the second half is they'll often ask you for stuff that they don't actually want. And that's a much harder thing to, to understand is they'll have a vision in their head of, I want this thing, which has this experience. And a great example of this is VR. I have so many people come to us and say, we want a VR project. And they will ask for, oh, and I want the camera to fly around and do this stuff. And you can stop <laughs> them and say, look, we're a VR, we're a VR team. We've done VR for six years. You don't want a flying camera because, <laughs> and you'll have to, you explain. You People know, throwing up all over like your, this, all your, your lobby. Yeah. <laughs> and so like they're hiring you for your expertise too. So yeah. you could be that guy. And I've seen these people, they will say, I'll take your job. I'll do exactly what you ask for. And the client will get the project back and they'll go, oh, this is horrible. And it's like, yes, it is. But that's what you asked me for. And I gave you the project. <laughs> and, and this goes for everybody. And this, I've seen a few comments that lead me to, um, to, to kind of, I really want to explain this because some of the comments in here, I can see the mindset already. I had this mindset for six years. If you are someone working in software and you see yourself as a cog in a wheel, you could say it's the fault of the company for not understanding or realizing your power or what you can do or that you, you've got all these great ideas they're not listening to. But if you do that, what you're kind of really saying is I don't care about the project you gave me. I care about the project I want to make and screw you and I won't do it or I will phone in your project because it's not the project I want to make. And those people 
never go anywhere because people can tell. People can tell if you don't care about their project. Mm-hmm. If you if you change it around and take the mindset of, I'm not actually here to write the best code possible. I'm not here to write the coolest system or the most awesome thing to show off to my other fellow <laughs> devs. It's more a case of the actual goal. The reason money is exchanging hands is so that I produce a product and that product has to fulfill some requirements that the client has. The client came to you because I want this thing because it'll increase my sales. I want this thing because it'll in- bring engagement or knowledge about my platform. I want this thing because I'm going to a trade show and we want that to be the coolest trade demo there. And if, if you understand that's what their job is, and you just say, okay, can I deliver on that? Forget what I want. Like, I, For example, I've been on projects where there's a really fun side portion of it. One I'm on right now, actually. There's something I want to pause and I want to spend two weeks just fleshing because it's a really <laughs> cool idea. It's like this really smart thing I had. I'm like, I could, I could make this into something really fun. But if I do that, I'm doing it at the expense of the project. Yeah. And if I do that, then the clients will tell because I won't be putting the time and the effort into where it needs to go for the project that I'm on. So I had to pause that and say, it sucks. It's where I want to spend my time. But if I if I pivot my objective to make the best project I can, um, I can do that. And then in my free time, I can go back and polish the other stuff I want to. But realistically, that this isn't a them problem. This is a you problem. Now, yeah. I'm not saying that a nine to five job isn't soul destroying. And sometimes you get into this weird situation where your boss is an asshole and you're stuck <laughs> on a legacy project. But there are ways to make that okay for yourself. Yeah. And the trick is, is either is to take ownership of something. And if I was to give one bit of advice to everybody out there, either in a nine to five job or working some dead end thing they don't like, it's because you see it as someone else's thing that yeah. you're stuck shoveling shit for. You hate it. You're sitting there going, I fucking hate this shitty job and I'm sitting here every day. And if you instead go, I've been given ownership of this and I want every time people look at the code or look at the project or see this portion, this is the bit that's got the least amount of problems. That's the best written. That's the easiest to modify. Whatever it is, pick yeah. something and say, I own this. And and I've done this and I've worked in companies where uh, they've, they were being bought out by somebody else. So they sent somebody around to look at the code everyone had done and to sort of like to establish the worth of the company when it's being sold. And I remember, because it was just such a silly moment, but it made me laugh. They came around to the back of my desk and they're like, oh, can you show us what you're working on? I showed them this and it's like, I have this and here's my unit tests and um, here's my code coverage metrics and uh, here's all the stuff. And one of the people vetting the quality of the code goes, oh, that's beautiful. It's like, and there you go. You are now the best <laughs> code they have seen today. Yeah. And, and it doesn't mean anything really. But I get to have, I get to enjoy my day because I get to be the guy who wrote the best code for this thing. Is it the code I would want to write? Not really. Is it the most important system in the company? Not really. But if I have that mindset, I can still enjoy the work I'm doing. So try to pivot away from they're not letting me work on the fun stuff I want and say, can I make the best thing, whatever this is that I'm working on? Thank you to all of my patrons and a special shout out to Jennifer Irwin, Christian, Urizer, Alwyn Kuravilla, Umit Sarin, Anton, Mighty Possum, Amar Duranovic, Dustin, Nav from Academy of Games, Usuf Ali Castle, Iron Alex, Trond, Dark Rush Photography, Glasswell Entertainment, and R-Star. Thank you.